Steve, I read once where you had said that you concentrated so much in the game of baseball when you were pitching that you didn't even know who the hitter was. You just concentrated on the catcher's mitt. That's, that's pretty true. That was uh, part of the weeding out of obstacles process that I went through that I realized that if I made the types of pitches in the areas that I was capable of, then the hitter would become like a no thing where, you know, good, uh, good pitches are not really hittable, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the game that, uh, that I played, but I purposely didn't look at the hitter to, to recognize him because my focus was really on the, getting the ball to the catcher. That's where my success lied. What about a guy like Pete Rose or Johnny Bench when they came into town, Willie Stargell, and they were hot with a bat? Did you still go with the same approach? Pretty much, yeah, because it was a, it was a successful approach. My game plan was set up for, a, like I said, a career. So I never really changed my thinking, even though someone might be hot or might, uh, you know, you, you move the ball around. You know, you see, you know, if a guy closes his stance, you might want to pitch him in. If he opens up, you might, you know, that kind of thing. If, if the hitter changes, the success for pitcher is to change immediately also. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you keep calling different pitches. But, but the general areas that we're talking about, you know, high and tight, low and away concept, if you, if you can basically pitch those, you know, th those are where the success areas lie for a pitcher. Even though Steve Carlton had the ability to simply overpower hitters with his fastball and hard slider, he still used a great deal of finesse when pitching. Like an artist with a brush, Carlton knew how to mix up his pitches and paint the corners. He was indeed a strikeout artist. his career, Steve averaged more than seven strikeouts per nine innings, and his total of 4,136 strikeouts is the all-time record for left-handed pitchers. On your best day, if I set a three-by-five book, that, a paperback book that I could read, how often could you hit it from 60 feet if I set it 36 inches high? Fairly often. Seven out of ten, eight probably, out of ten? Probably seven to eight out of ten. I don't think people really realize that. Yeah, it's, it's quite a skill. I think people feel as if you have a 95 mile an hour fastball, if you have a great curveball, that you can just throw them for strikes and be successful in the major leagues. Well, you watch Clemens and Gooden and uh, Nolan pitch, and they, they pitch off the heart of the plate as hard as they throw. You know, they cut that fastball you know, up and into a left hander, and they, they pitch it away, and they just move it around. Mm -hmm. The heart of the plate, belongs to the hitter and that's that's the way it should be and if and if a hitter is taking the corner away from you then it's time to to either brush him back or pitch in mm -hmm. you have you have to you have to change because the circumstances are changing for any team to win a championship they must have a stopper that one pitcher who can be counted on every fourth day to win a ball game Having an ace pitcher like Steve Carlton was like having a built-in guarantee that any losing streak would be kept short. In 1980, Steve Carlton helped lead the Phillies to a World Series title by winning 24 games during the regular season and three more in postseason play. As a result, Steve Carlton received his third Cy Young Award. Complete pitcher, Carlton also possessed one of the best pickoff moves in the game. And with the bat, Steve often came through with a game-winning RBI. During his 24-year career, Steve batted over 200 and belted 13 home runs. In 1982, Steve had another brilliant year when he led the league in wins, strikeouts, and shutouts. Steve was the only man to win 20 or more games that year. And once again, he received the Cy Young Award, making him the first player ever to win this prestigious award four times. During 
his career, Steve Carlton was one of the most durable pitchers of all time. He set a major league record of 544 consecutive starts. His streak would finally come to an end in 1985 when he strained the rotator cuff in his left shoulder. After he returned to action, he was never able to regain his overpowering form. On June 24, 1986, the Phillies released the man who for 15 years was the ace of their pitching staff. An intense competitor, Steve was persistent that he could still pitch. Over the next two years, he was given an opportunity on four different teams, but it was clear that he was still struggling. On April 28, 1988, 43-year-old Steve Carlton was released for the last time. During your last few years, Steve, you're no longer overpowering the hitters. And I wonder myself as a fan, as a baseball player, why you didn't stay with the Phillies and retire and, and, and leave the game like everybody wanted you to leave the game. Well, there was that transition into more of a finesse pitcher, and uh, you can't you can't be that finesse pitcher unless you go through that transition and, and experience that. I, I didn't feel like leaving the game. Uh, that competitive bug was still very much uh, in there. And uh, you know, you watch, like I say, you watch guys that uh, you know throw in the low 80s, like John Tudor, and, that, and they come up with that really good change up. And uh, you know, they just work with a fastball off the corners of the plate and and still win 20 games. So. That's a, that's a sort of transition that's possible. I, I never did uh, accomplish that, but I always felt that that was that was possible, mm -hmm. you know. And I just I never never really made it to that uh, to that point where I got a chance to to pitch on an everyday basis. The media, greatest sports legends, a show out of Philadelphia. The nation's going to watch this. Why this show? Why'd you do this? I really I don't I don't know. You know, just. Uh, Give a chance to everybody, you know, that that's been you know sort of out of the picture for the last 10 or 12 years, to see what's going on, you know, fan appreciation, that kind of thing, a little payback. All the years I didn't talk to the media. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think Willie Stargell once said, uh, "Hitting against Steve Carlton is like trying to drink coffee with a fork." During your career, you're obviously one of the most dominant pitchers that that ever put on a pair of spikes, and obviously a Hall of Famer, for sure. I want to thank you for coming down to the Dana Point Resort and letting us take a look inside your career and certainly taking a look at that career on Greatest Sports Legends. Thanks. Thank you, Reggie. It was fun. Appreciate it.